praise the Lord. Um, but before we find anything, let's just go to him. Let's invite his presence here and all be um, in one accord to invite just the spirit of the Lord to be in this place. We're expecting to have something happen today and not leave here the way we walked in. So let's, let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come together. Lord, your church as one, in one accord, Lord, to just be here and be in this place. Lord, we invite your presence. Be with us. We came to church today, not only to fellowship and love on one another and worship you, Lord, but, but we don't want to leave the same. Lord, give us revelation. Lord, let our, our hearts be receptive and our minds be open. Thank you for giving us a place where we can commune and be with you and fellowship together. Thank you for a beautiful day in your mighty name. We love you so much, and we just pray you'd be with us. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Right behind you. She's got some more.
Give me your eyes, 
and I'm told I can move this, right? Jacob, I'm fouling everything up. Hmm? I'll go over here. Why not? Just because. Why not? So that's not bad, right? I'm sorry? That's what I do. I know. It will. That could have turned ugly. Okay. I think we're there. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Wow. Okay. Well, all right. Well, good afternoon. Nobody then. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right. So praise God. We're, we're here for another, we've had another wonderful week, um, just through in our lives, in our, in our careers, in, at our homes, and just things are moving in our lives. And I'm really excited about being here. I don't know if you guys have had a spectacular week or not, but you know, I have it. And so, mm. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's just, this week has been last week. Something changed, uh, for me personally, it, it was a, there was something that happened during worship and into our message that really changed for me that made something just different. I don't know what, it, I know what it is because my, my eyes got opened, uh, to some things that I've been missing for so long. And I'm really glad that it happened. And I'm glad that we have somebody who is so tapped into the spirit that is able to, pick the perfect songs every week to get us in a place that we need to be. And it's very exciting to be able to have that in our ministry. And so thank you for that. Um, you know, this whole year we've been in a state of transformation. I mean, the entire year we have seen from beginning of the year, if you look at where we were to where we are now, it is completely different. It, I mean, look at where we are. I mean, before we'd have a couple of little pop-ups and we hope to God that nobody was roasting uh, because they're you're half in and half out of the sun. Now we have this wonderful uh, shaded area that we're able to be. We're, we're getting much more um, buy-in at the at the community center. We're having a, a massive event that we're looking at coming up in December. And when I say massive, just so you guys know, Brother Cal has reached out to, I swear, everybody that's in Boyce and Barry, Berryville, including their town council and everybody else, to get them involved with the Christmas Carol sing-along. So this could, uh, and we, I'll be reaching out to the local community um, the elementary schools, the middle school, uh, several of the local businesses to see how they can help out as well. So I'm hoping this year is going to be a ridiculous year um, in a good way. Uh, so it'll be amazing to see what comes out of that. So we're seeing transformation. That was the whole word that was spoken over the ministry this year was that we had was transformation. And I see that. I see that in the lives of, of, our, of our folks, of our families that are here and of our church family. And it's great. You know, last week, Pastor Mel talked about walking with integrity and what that looked like as an individual and as a leader. Because no matter how young you are, it doesn't matter. You're still a leader in some capacity. I can tell you I have been led by my children because a lot of times uh, their purity in their heart and in their spirit can take me to some place that I can't get there because I'm too stubborn and too bullheaded. So they're able to lead us there in that. So if you just because you don't have a title, titles are, don't mean a thing. You're still a leader. You know, integrity is a word that's thrown out often and people are told about it. And they, and we have to feel like we have to live up to the expectations of that word, don't we? And, and But Pastor Mel expressed it, I think, best last week when she said that integrity is best seen at when no one else is looking. That's when the true test of your integrity is. Um, we got to continue to, you know, church, we got to continue to walk in the path that God has laid out for you. You know, we got to stay hungry for that Christ-like attitude, that Christ-like demeanor and that view on humanity, just like, you know, that last song that we sang. You know, you, we need his eyes. We need his, his love uh, for humanity. And are we walking in that every day? But I didn't come here to talk to you this week about integrity um, because that was her word. That wasn't what I got. Um, but I believe, honestly, we could probably do a whole series on integrity. That's on her if we do because that was her word. So I'm sorry, just throwing that out there. Mic drop. I'm not going to drop your mic, Jake, but you know. Um, so I was laying in bed the other day, actually the other night, um, and it was last Sunday night. And it was, you know, at those times right before you go to sleep, I mean, you're just like right on the verge and everything, you, your body, you can feel your body start to relax and your mind is like finally empty and it's shut down for the day. And right, I was, I swear, I was just about to start snoring and have Pastor Mel, you know, give me the elbow when I started singing the chorus from one of the songs that we played last week. And it was, 
what will I find? And I just, it can't, I cannot stop singing that song this week. It will not get out of my mind. I swear I wake up singing it. I go to bed singing it. I hum it all day at work. People probably think I'm nuts because I'm walking around singing the, the same song day all day. And that's exactly what I want to answer for you guys today. What will I find? Because, you know, the other week we had a sermon that was entitled, Let's Get After It. The message was clear about how, how bad do we really want to get into the presence of the Lord? How bad do we want to get into His will? Sorry. Um, how bad do we want to see with His eyes, uh, hear with His ears, and how bad do we want to love with His heart? That's really at the core of what it was. You know, and I really saw that whole theme, and I expressed this that week, uh, that you're coming at it from a point of desperation. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the word desperation, it's a very negative connotation to it. I get that. I understand because this is when people throw it out there, it's he stole that food because it was out of desperation. His family was starving. I, I made that decision. It was a rash decision out of desperation. Well, this is what De uh, Webster's Dictionary says. And, and there, bear with me. It's, it's a multitude of definitions. It says, having lost hope, giving no ground for hope, moved by despair or utter loss of hope, involving or employing extreme measures in an attempt to escape defeat or frustration, suffering extreme need or anxiety, involving extreme danger or possible disaster, which that one cracks me up, or uh, of extreme intensity. So many of these definitions, I can absolutely understand that when you hear desperation, it's like, yeah, no, that's not for me. I don't want to do anything out of desperation because I don't think any of us really want to get to that point in our lives, right? Although most of us, I know myself included, we've been there. We've been, I've been desperate at times where, you know, we had to make some decisions that probably weren't the smartest, but we do it out of desperation because we thought there was no hope. But this is when I was researching this and there was one of the, when the Webster's, if you look at it, it uses the words in a sentence, which is nice. It's almost like, you know, Jeopardy for, for us dumb people. And it says, it said, we have a desperate spirit crying for relief. That struck a chord in me so deeply that I was like, wow, that's the kind of desperate I want to have in my spirit. I want to be desperate for relief in God. I want to be desperate to see with his eyes. I want to be desperate to love with his heart and to see humanity for what it is. A bunch of his children that are lost, that are broken, that are wandering aimlessly, trying to find what it is that he's called them for, right? So, you know, there are so many that feel when we give our lives over to Christ as our Lord and Savior that everything is going to miraculously be incredible. That there's going to be, there's this misconception that there's, life is going to be full of roses and unicorns and rainbows and butterflies and all this spectacular stuff, right? That's what we expect to happen when we have our, our, our aha moment with God. But anybody who's been, that, who's been a believer for any length of time will tell you without hesitation or any reservation that every single day that we wake up is a battle. It's a battle from the time we open our eyes to the time we shut them. And a lot of times, depending on how your night goes, it could be an overnight battle as well. Once we step into our faith and eventually you step into your calling, the enemy attacks you at every stinking turn. Just when you take five steps forward, he tries to knock you back ten. He hits you at work, through your friends, through dreams. And yes, believe it or not, sometimes he hits you even with those that are closest to you, your family. And that hurts. That hurts a lot. Whether you, whether you want to admit it or not, if those people aren't strong in their faith, he, they can absolutely be used as a weapon against you. So then the question we've po we have posed in front of us today that I, that I brought is, what will I find? Right? If you become a believer, what will I find? Our journey as a believer, it's filled with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I, I've experienced, you know, those mountaintop moments and those moments in the valley. You know, I used to get into these very deep theological discussions and deep conversations with my dad about God, religion, and all things uh, of belief. And, you know, now my dad, he never graduated high school. He wasn't an educated man by any stretch of the imagination. However, he was one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. He had more useless knowledge in that brain than I have ever met uh, in anybody else. Mel and I used to play Trivial Pursuit against him. It was two on one, and he'd kick our butts every single time because he had all this useless information in his mind. But he was very philosophical. He was very deep in his conversations and the way he thought about the world and the way he thought about religion. And don't get him started on politics. Good Lord. That's a two-hour conversation in itself. 
he grew up in a house that knew the Lord, and he himself actually was a believer when he was growing up. But see, he was a boy of faith. But then that boy went off to war. And he lost his grip on reality as it pertained to an all-powerful, an all-knowing, and an all-loving Christ and an all-loving God. You know, we were in the middle of our, our discussions one day, and I asked him, I said, Dad, why do you no longer believe? Why, do you, why are you no longer of faith? And his answer was very short, and there was a distant tone in his voice and even in his demeanor. And he said, simply said, he said, I can't understand why God would allow such terrible things to happen to women and children. And I said, what do you mean, Dad? Without going into further detail, he said that when he was in Vietnam, he witnessed things that were so inhumane that he couldn't long, any longer believe that there was a God who would allow that to happen. I'd say that's the lowest of lows. That's where he hit. Now, another time he was up visiting and, you know, as were the usual, he and I would hop in the car and we'd drive into town and it was just time for us to spend together just to kind of chew the fat and talk and get some real, you know, uh, dad and son time, which, which was nice. And I asked him, I said, hey, Pop, what is the best thing that's ever happened in your life? <laughs> a random question, right? And without hitching, a, I mean, just without any hitch, he says, very simply, seeing the miracle of my grandchildren being born and knowing what the deepest of loves looks like. I was like, wow, okay. The highest of highs for him was that. Now, our individual walks may not mirror those highs and those lows, but we each have, like I said before, we have our mountaintop moments. We have those moments where you feel like it, life couldn't be any better, that you feel so close to God and so on top of the world that everything is just perfect. And then you have those times where you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, right? And you feel that evil is attacking from all sides and you feel that there's no hope. You feel that there's no respite. You're not, there's not a way that you can get away from what it is Sorry, that's anybody comes past me outside. I'm always waving at them just because I'm trying to see if they'll stop. That is random. Sorry, um, <laughs> it's just me. Um, but we don't have that. Uh, we don't have that luxury to be on the mountaintop every single day, do we? I wish we did. That would make our lives so much easier, right? <clears throat> However, I think there's so much to learn in both of these situations that we find ourselves in those mountaintop moments and in those valley moments. We really have an opportunity, whether or not we choose to take it. Unfortunately, though, for many people in this life, we have expectations as to what we're going to get out of this situation or relationship, right? It's always, what am I going to get out of this? How am I going to benefit from this or, or that, right? It's hard. It's hard because it's so easy because that's how we're conditioned growing up. Well, if I do this for you, then I expect you to do this for me. And we learn something completely opposite in our faith walk and through the word, don't we? So we had a, a, worship, a song in worship today that had these lyrics, and I'm not going to sing it because I'm not singing. That's why these ladies are here and Sean. It said, give me a word, give me a sign, show me where to look, tell me what will I find. Love is in the water, love is in the air, show me where to go, tell me will love be there. Teach me how to speak, teach me how to share, teach me where to go, tell me will love be there. As I told you guys, this song has been my guiding light this entire week. I cannot get it. It's, it's like, it's part of me now. This, this song is this one and another one that I've been listening to all week that I can't stop listening to. It's caused me to ask a lot of questions and it's also given me such incredible insight. <clears throat> you see, a relationship that we enter into, into with God is one that's, it's, it's mysterious, but it's comforting at the same time, right? There's, an, uh, there's uncertainty there but there's unabounding joy that we find. And ultimately what we find is love. That's what you find. First John 4, 7 through 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not, who does not love does not know God because God is love. You see, when we fully surrender, and it's really we surrender out of desperation, right? A desperate spirit crying for relief. We will find love. Love is the root of everything. It's the reason each one of you were created. It's the reason that God gave us free will. It's the reason that we deep in our core, in our core, at our very being, if you, if you see a little kid, that's when you're going to see the, the most honest and the most pure. And what they want to do is they want to help others. 
I can't tell you our kids when they were little, they always say, oh, you know, dad, can I help? And, and even still, I'll have Joe or Tristan, hey, dad, can I help? And it's, it's because that's what's in their core. And, it, and love is the reason that Christ set aside his authority to come and redeem us to the Father and once again be able to go directly to our Daddy God, seeking his wisdom and his guidance. In seeking after him and surrendering our flesh, what will we find? We'll find love. I absolutely love the lyrics to that song. I do. I, if you haven't noticed, I mean, I've talked about it the entire <laughs> sermon already, right? If you look at those first two lines, it says, give me a word, give me a sign, show me where to look, tell me what will I find. God will impart a word to you if you seek it. He will absolutely give you a sign if you seek it. And when you walk in his will, he will absolutely show you where to look. And every word he gives you, every sign that, he, that is put in front of you, and every place he guides you, why does he do it? Because he loves you. Simply, he loves you. Now, further down in the song, it states, love is in the water, love is in the air. Show me where to go. Tell me, will love be there? 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, now, so now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. You see, in our relationship with the Lord, we find three things right here in uh, 1 Corinthians. We find faith, hope, and love. I gave a sermon about faith, hope, and love previously, and without those three things, we couldn't make it from day to day, right? We have faith that God's going to get us through. We have hope that he's going to come through. And we love because he first loved us. Simple as that, right? The first line says, love is in the water. Now, you guys know I'm a nurse. I look at things from a scientific perspective. If you look at it from that scientific perspective, the brain and heart are composed of 73% water. And the lungs are about 83% water. So we need water to live, we need water to think, and we need water to breathe. Pretty interesting. So from a faith perspective, Christ gives us the living water. What is that living water? I'm glad you asked. It's our salvation and a true knowledge of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And through them, that God provides us with everything we need as the living water always gives back to us. Love is in the, in the air. I love this. Anybody ever read Genesis? Yeah. All right. So Genesis 2, 7, right at the very beginning of the Bible. In the King James, it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What is our breath? Our breath is air. Love was breathed into Adam. Love is in the air. Do you guys track where I'm coming, going with this? I, I, like this has been eating at me all week. I couldn't wait for Sunday to get here so we could talk about this. Has anyone here ever seen a baby take its first breath? The absolute most beautiful, incredible thing I've ever witnessed. I mean, I, when Madeline was, because <laughs> Madeline was the first birth that I got to attend. And let me tell you what, I almost passed out. I'm full transparency. I had seen blood gore. I have seen the worst of the worst. But like seeing this little baby, I was just like, oh, I was bobbing and weaving. Why? Because I was overwhelmed with such, it was just so amazing. So incredible to see this little thing there just like, holy cow, right? And then to watch, it comes out not breathing, not doing anything, just kind of there. And then you stimulate and it takes its first breath and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely amazing to see that. And it's like Pop, my, my Pop said, you all right over there? I'm great. getting attacked by stink bugs. I'm good. <laughs> That's fantastic. Like Pop said, it's truly a miracle to watch them take this first giant breath. It's almost like someone is just filling their lungs for them. And then the, the final line in that verse says, show me where to go, tell me will love be there. He does show us exactly where to grow, go. You may ask, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the cross. He's shown us the path directly to the cross. And what's at the cross? It's love. That's where love was poured out in its purest form for us. He didn't have to go there. He didn't have to give his life. He didn't have to let a single drop of blood leave his body. Yet he did, and why? Love, because he loves you for who you are, who you're meant to be, and for all those things that you are going to be. He knew that we were going to need that love to get us through. <laughs> then we see the song finish out with, teach me how to speak, 
teach me how to share, teach me where to go, tell me will love be there. Again, back to 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. It says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. I know some incredibly intelligent, smart, genius people. I've listened to some of the most incredible lectures and sermons that I could have ever hoped to sit in. But I walked away from those completely unchanged. It was just a lot of words, just blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, Charlie Brown's um, teacher. Wah, 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 wah. That's what I, how I felt when I walked away. It, nothing sunk in. Nothing. There was no aha for me during that sermon or that lecture. And why? Because there was no love behind it. There was no, there was no passion behind it. There was no spirit driving that lecture or anything. And, you know, I don't care. So, random aside, again, you guys know that I'm in science. I'm a nurse. I... You can absolutely infuse faith into anything scientific. I don't care who you are. And if you're out there and you think that's wrong, contact me. We'll talk. But I'm telling you right now, if you think that you can't infuse faith with science, dead wrong. And that's why it bothers me so much to walk away from these people who are complete and utter geniuses that I could learn probably so much from if they would allow faith to be infused in what it is that they're teaching. It's unfortunate. Every week... I could get up here and give you the most eloquent, amazing lecture. And that's what it would be. It would be a lecture. It'd be like you're back in high school again. Nobody wants to be back in high school again. I didn't like high school when I went there. It was bad enough the first go around. I don't want to send you guys back there either. We could give you a great presentation on who God is, what the Bible says. We could, we, I could stand up here and lecture you all, uh, you know, all week, every week about the things that we learned in seminary and this and that and and about hermeneutics and all this other stuff which nobody wants to learn because that's not a fun class you know we're both educated and she has more degrees behind her name than should be legal okay but all of that compels in comparison to the love that was placed in our hearts and in our spirits for each and every person that we have the honor to call part of our kingdom family You see, in my experience, I can't tell you what salvation looks like for you. What you'll experience, what you'll feel, or even what you'll have revealed to you. I can't see those things for you. It's only the love of God that can do this for each and every one of us as an individual. It's not some amazing sermon preached by a pastor that leads a person to salvation. That's not it. It's the love of God through the Spirit that transforms a life of pain, hopelessness, and fear into a life of victory, eternity, and love. So ultimately, when we answer this question, what will I find? We're going to find love. How are we going to find it? It sums it up best in 1 John 4, 19. It says, we love because he first loved us. You know, guys, I know it's, it seems like a simple concept. It seems like a very simple principle, and it is. It really, honest to God, is a simple principle. But why do we struggle so deeply with understanding that we're loved? It's because the world sets us up for failure. Humanity sets us up for failure. But you see, as a believer, you're set apart. You're set apart for something greater. You're set apart to see things in a different light. You're set apart to see humanity and your fellow humans as a different, in a different way. But so often that we look at those outside influences, whether it's TikTok or Bookface or chat snap, yeah, I know they're wrong. I know I say it. I do that to annoy my children, or whatever other social media platforms are out there. All of those things will tell you you're not good enough if you don't do this, or you're not cool because you don't have this or that, right? You're not the best because you don't love this type of music. Well, you know, it doesn't really matter what other people think. I can't tell you the number of times we've had this conversation with our kids this week, alone. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what your teachers think. It doesn't matter what my boss thinks. It doesn't matter what whoever you come across. It doesn't matter what they think. The only one that you need to have approval from is our Lord. That's it. End of story. 
That's the only one that you need to be under his, his eyes and under his watch. That's where you need your approval from. So if you seek after him, if you seek after him wholeheartedly and fully with every fiber of your being, what are you going to find? You're going to find love. That's the answer to our question, guys. That's what we're looking after. As we transform our lives, as we finish out this year of transformation, we're transforming because we know that he first loved us. And because he first loved us, we can love others. We say, love God, love people, right? And sometimes that's so hard. Let me tell you, whoo. <laughs> I give the example, I get on 66. You can't love people on 66. I'm sorry. Or on 81 for that matter anymore. 81's turned into the Wild West, right? However, we still are dictated to love other people, to love all people. And why? Because he first loved us. So guys, when you walk out of here this week, don't just let this message die here. Don't let it just, this be the end of it. I'm not telling you to go and put, you know, that song Shine on repeat on your playlist, although I encourage you to because it's a great reminder because I've, I've done it this week. That other song, literally, my, I'm sure my phone's like, for all that's holy, stop. <laughs> I'm going to play it one more time. I'm going to shut myself off. But I encourage you, remember, the, you know, love truly is everywhere. Are you, are you looking for it? Are you looking for his influence in your life? Are you looking for the love that he sheds out on you that you can then pour out on somebody else? Take that away from here today, guys. It's, that's all I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to go and love on somebody this week. I'm not asking you to go and be everybody's best friend. Nope. But love takes on many forms. It's in the form of, hey, good morning. It's great to see you today. It's as simple as holding the door open for somebody at the store. I know that sounds stupid. But... I can't tell you the number of times that I've gotten irritated when I, I'll hold the door for somebody and I'll let them through, which is fine. You know, and I teach my boys the same thing. And if they don't, I tell them to go back and hold the door for somebody. They're like, okay. You know, but I've seen when I expected somebody like my, I always make sure I bring up the rear when Mel and the kids are, we're going to the store because dad's supposed to be behind to keep an eye on everything. Right. But that's why I feel anyway. But somebody will like be like right in front of them, they just open the door and just like slam the door right in their face. That just sends fire through me for some reason. I don't know why. I, it makes no sense. But, it's, but the simple act of being courteous is an act of love. Holding the door for somebody, how long is that going to take? 10 seconds maybe? What are you missing? Nothing, right? Be a love bearer this week, Okay. Be a love bearer and a light bearer this week. That's what we're called to do. And I know it's hard, especially you guys that are in school. But find somebody each day to do something. Do that good thing once daily. For us old people, we can do the same thing. That means you too, Sean. You're kind of in between. You're not old. You're not young. You're kind of in between. <laughs> so guys, as you go out of here today, be blessed. Know that we love you so very much. I am so thankful for each and every one of you that are here today that may be tuned in. I, I just, I, it doesn't, my words fail me to tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you and appreciate the fact that you come here every week, whether it's, you know, you join us virtually or you join us live. It's, it, it, it's a weird time. I know it's a bizarre time of day to come out at three o'clock. It's really weird. Um, but it's what the Lord told us. And I appreciate you being, you know, hooked up with us to do that. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer as we finish out today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. I thank you for, Lord, this, this message. Father, I thank you for just opening my eyes, Lord, to see what it looks like from your point of view, from your perspective. Lord, thank you for the words that we heard today. Lord, and I pray that as we go out this week, the Lord, that you will be with each and every one. Father, that you will bless them, that you will cover them, that you will keep them, Lord, that you will give them your eyes and your ears and your heart, Lord, so that they can really go out and love on somebody. They can show that love. They can be that love. Father, I pray that, uh, Lord, as they do go, Lord, that you're, uh, we dispatch angels to go before, behind, and surround each one of them with a hedge of protection. Father, that regardless of any attack, regardless of any uh, pushback that they may get, Father, that they will be victorious and triumphant in whatever it is that this mighty congregation will do. And Father, we thank you for that. Father, we ask for you to be in our presence at all times. 
Lord, be in our midst at all times. Lord, let us look, and everywhere we look, we see you. Father, I thank you and I praise you for today. Lord, we give, give you all the praise and all the glory. And in Jesus' name, amen.